Well, you know, as, as people look at the new year, I think resolutions are always on people's mind and planning. And for homeowners, a lot of times it's setting up the budget and the priorities for the new year. Yeah, and what are those projects going to be? Projects, that's a good way to put it. Home remodeling, yes. right? And so I think as we think about uh, some of the points that could make home remodeling successful and maybe a little less successful, it's an opportunity to share the top five things that a homeowner could do to remodel their home and get perceived value if they, in the short term or longer term, were going to consider selling that home. This information would be from an article in Howes Magazine. Mm -hmm. I think we should talk about it. Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to the channel. I'm Terry with MVP Realty. I'm Rich with MVP Realty. Thanks for joining us for this episode. And as we alluded to in the introduction, as we turn to a new year and resolutions and, and thinking about what lies ahead, homeowners often include updates to their home in their resolutions for the year, right. uh, maybe because they want to live differently in their house and they want it to be refreshed, and maybe because they're thinking about putting their house on the market. Right. And not every remodel is created equal. No, it's not. And it's also very important to, to have that, uh, you know, what are you, what are you doing it for? Are you doing it to, to live in and to, and, right. and to uh, enjoy yourself? Or are you gonna do it just so that you can put it up for sale? Right, that objective is important. And sometimes for people, it's striking a balance between both of those things, right? There could be a balance of, I wanna do this for myself, but I wanna be thoughtful, because if I am going to resell it, I wanna keep that in mind right. and make sure that there's a reasonable return on my investment. So if we wanna talk about the top five remodeling tips, uh, stick with us because we're going to go in reverse order. Right. We'll go from five to one and see if you can guess them in general and can you guess the order. I was surprised a little bit by the order of uh, how these were rated. A gentleman named Matt Clausen wrote an article in Howes Magazine and this is what their consensus says and they're into homes and home decorating and right. home value so it's an interesting piece to to look at and and to think about see if we agree or not. Right. Number five Number on five. the list bathrooms yeah did you think it would be number five i knew it would be on the list i i thought it would be a little bit higher than that that but, was my uh, thought as well but but bathrooms you know, remodeling or refreshing that bathroom is uh is is number five on the list it's number five so that's a big consideration it can bring value back to the homeowner and there are some tips within the thought about remodeling bathrooms not all bathrooms are created equal when it comes to value back there are two bathrooms that are probably the most important ones to think about if you think they need a refresh and could benefit. One, of course, being the primary bedroom's mm -hmm. bath, which right. is often an ensuite bath for the master bedroom. Right. The other is your powder room, which is going to be used from people coming and going and um, you know, during the course of the day in the living space. And those two are rated as more likely to bring value than if you then go on in next category would be secondary guest bathrooms or kids bathrooms and I think a couple times in the article the author sort of makes apologies sorry kids right. the people who are paying the bills when a house gets sold right. are the the buyers so you think about how adults think of things and the spaces that are important right. to them that primary bathroom gonna, and the powder room gonna are going to outrank that, the uh, other bathrooms yeah, in a look, house look at the ensuite bathroom and a, a bathroom remodeling can range anywhere from a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. So, you know, you have to look at that and what you think you're gonna get back off of that. Sometimes, you know, uh, some maybe new fixtures, new light fixtures, some paint, and, and you're out of there for a couple hundred bucks and it looks beautiful. Right, it could be that the next sort of level that is still manageable from a budget point of view is resurfacing cabinets. Mm -hmm. We're getting a new kind of color neutral, uh, color palette in a bathroom. Right. New countertops can do that. What we haven't said is you've got to rip out every wall right. or move your plumbing you know, to redo the whole layout right. because at some point that is a huge expense and you're not going to see all of that come back. Right. So if your objective is because I want it that way and I love it, then do more it. power right. to you. But if you're thinking about balancing that objective with is this going to sell? Can I recoup some of my investment? Right. I think the way you described it is think about within the layout you have, 
what are the things that are going to really bring it to life, bring it to a modern right. stage, and it doesn't mean ripping the whole thing out no, and going gutting it to the walls. Right. It doesn't you can have do it to in happen. a weekend, or you can do it in a month. So yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the other thing is to take projects that you actually can get from the starting point to the end point. Home projects sometimes have a life of their own and <laughs> unintended consequences, right? And right. so if you start a project and it's really extensive and you're ripping out walls, you're finding out you have a wiring issue, you find out your air conditioning or heating ducts or someplace, and one right. thing kind of triggers three more things, right. the extent of that renovation and the time frame to get it done might be very different than what the homeowner thought at the beginning, and That's bathrooms right. are one of those. Yes, so absolutely. it's a good place for you to bring that up. Yep. That's a great point. So, but bathrooms are on the list and it's something that catches people's eye and they want it to feel modern and inviting and um, that they don't have to go rip it out and make a project of it if they buy right. your house. Exactly. So I think that's why that one's there. Mm -hmm. Now, not unrelated when we talk about adults are making these decisions, both of what to invest in now that they want to enjoy and what might bring value on a sale, the master suite. Right. That is number four on the list as we're counting from five up to number one. Right. So master suite remodel or creating right. a master suite mm -hmm. out of the rooms that you have. Right for the primary bedroom. And again, that doesn't have to be very expensive. Uh, you can take out that old worn out carpet and put in a right. nice laminate floor. Oh, nice. You can, uh, again, paint, put in a new light fixture, a new fan, something like that. You can also, you know, put in, uh, you know, more modern window coverings. Right, and those are all things that you can do within that very manageable kind of first level budget mm -hmm. that totally modernize things. At the second level that you can consider, but again, it's going to get more expensive. And if you live in a community where there are homeowner association rules, you start to trigger um, needing approval would be if you say, boy, my windows really need to be modernized right. or my sliding door or French door to the outside from a master suite is an option, but I need to really work on that. If it can be seen from the outside and it's structural and you live in an HOA community in Florida, you need permission. Right. And in general, it's just going to be obviously taking that remodeling cost up to another level. Right. It may make a world of difference. Right. And, uh, so yeah. something to consider but I think to your point, you can get so much done within the walls that you have, mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's internally making sure that the bathroom is accessible as an ensuite bath, or right. that there's a little sitting room area mm -hmm. that you maybe refresh your closets and That's do the right. closet yeah. organizers exactly. in the master that That's make it one. like wow. People walk into closets and they see that organizer already there, and it's like, oh, I love it. You know? Right, and you so. probably get your money back, and it's helped you along the way because you can actually find your stuff. Ex exactly. Right. We don't have attics and we don't have basements in Florida, so I think that's one of the big learnings that um, storage space is at a premium, and if you can make it even better and more productive right. space, you're really and on the right it, track. Have it in a climate controlled area instead of up out in the garage or where up, everything up melts in the, and exactly. gets too so, humid and yeah. ugh, what a mess. So. so. No, that's a great one. So that's why master suites are item number four right. out of the top five that uh, brings some value when you think about your home remodeling. Right. Number three is a tried and true one. It's mm -hmm. one that I think as real estate professionals, we talk to people about all the time. Right. And it's that there's kind of like two cliches or, or you know overused phrases, but they both count here. One is you only get one chance to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. And the other one in this case is you might be judging a book by its cover. Right, that's right. right? So. Because the outside of your house, the curb appeal, is point number three in our countdown. Right. Third most popular and beneficial way to improve the value of your home is enhance its curb appeal. It, it is, and for uh, again, just you know, for a few hundred bucks, and when we pull into a driveway and we see that the, the grass is a mess or the or the trees need to be trimmed and things like that, that makes that first in first impression. On, on that uh, potential buyer and you know they're, they're already thinking well what else you know what's the next thing rather than saying I love it and they want to continue that trend of I love it they're on to and I hate it what are else are they even going to park right. the car are right. they going to get out and come see it that, we've had that too you know where and they when just you're, say we don't need to go in yeah. when you're doing online marketing often the exterior photo is the first photo that comes up in sequence yes. on these online forums and so while you may post other pictures of your cool kitchen or or your bedroom or your living space if the curb appeal doesn't look right people may not set up the appointment to come see your home right. period and it could be that your driveway looks like you know the weeds are coming through the pavers or if you have an asphalt driveway it's all cracked mm -hmm. um, maybe tree roots are starting to encroach 
think about, you know, is there something you can do right. to resurface that, to certainly get rid of weeds and, and things that right. are intruding that don't belong there, right. have it tended to. Uh, and I think in the front flower and garden beds, having a refreshed landscaping plan, a few more or a few healthier looking bushes or small trees, not to make it look like a jungle and overgrown, but right. to just freshen it up and make people think about, wow, I want to stop and see what else that house has to offer. And in a lot of HOAs, they already have the landscaping company there and they're doing that and they're keeping it spruced up. Uh, and you, but it doesn't. It doesn't mean that you can't go in with approval and add a little color to it. Great maybe point. spruce up the, uh, the the mulch or the the pine straw that they put in there. Just make it look a little, you know, newer, cleaner. That type of stuff. So even though you're in an HOA, you can add some color. People, you know, people like that. They sure do. The other thing you can do often, and it's usually approvable within an HOA within reason, is sometime getting beautiful like ceramic pots the mm -hmm. pots themselves can be very artful mm -hmm. and attractive and putting some even seasonal plantings maybe near the front of your walk or near your front door mm -hmm. and those are not even permanent in the landscape right. they're just things you're doing to enhance that attractiveness right at the front to draw someone in you might be repainting your front door right. with approval if you're in an HOA right. to make sure the colors right <laughs> that seems to be a theme right HOA <laughs> HOAs if it's outside approval. they need to know yeah. You don't want them to tell you to take it back. But right. certainly, you know, the, the, the sun really does some work on our doors, garage doors, front doors, window frames. So even if you're not changing the color, right. just sanding that down, getting the, the kind of dried out right. paint off and starting with a clean coat of even yeah. the same color and paint. Changing the doorknob. Sometimes oh, again yes. with the sun, that doorknob or the door handle can get all kinds of messed up. And I've done it, uh, I've, I've taken them off and I've gone through refinishing it myself and everything. And it, you know, it probably cost me four bucks to, for the materials. Right. And, and then the, the, the elbow grease, but you can just replace that with something new, maybe with an electronic lock or something like that. Again, that's all part of the, when people walk up into that first impression for the front door. Absolutely. So out of the top five, we've talked about three. Number five was bathrooms. Number four was the master suite. And this one, number three, was curb appeal. Now, you've got to be able to get better than those three to make the top of the list. Right. And I think uh, you know what one of them is going to be. We're going to say I think most people will guess <laughs> at least one. Now, this next one, though, might be the one that you're not thinking about. And in Florida, the interpretation of it might be a little different than even the way it's described in this article. And I will try to get the link to this article and put it in the description below the video so you can go back and read the article at your leisure and really dig into these ideas a little more. But number two on the list is adding living space. Right usable, productive living space. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some watch outs about how you do that right. because it can get very expensive. If you think you're going to add a room, an internal room, you're talking about more foundation, right. oh, the, the drywall, the roofing, electrical and then and the electrical you and plumbing. You have to get contractors in there for And this again, kind of you, need HOA and you need approval, a, need approval if you're, and, if and you're in a community. If you, you know, so there's that, when you're talking about roof line, you're, you're starting to talk about a lot of money, but also in Florida, living space doesn't have to be inside space. Well, that is a huge point. Tell us more about what your thoughts are there, because in Florida, there's a nice way to bring some value to a home that maybe could be enhanced with additional living space. Right. How, how might a, a homeowner do it here? Well, we spend so much time, especially in the winter months, outside of our home. Ah, yes. So adding living space to the outside of the home, it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be very expensive because you're, you're adding uh, maybe some pavers in the back. You're adding, putting uh, some kind of a covered lanai area back there, maybe with an outdoor kitchen. And you know, when people come out and they see that covered area that they can they can come out and relax and have dinner outside. That is a big plus, rather than not having anything there at all. Right. Or sometime a. Um a builder's minimal specification for the home, even if it was built a while ago or recently, might be a small covered lanai, mm -hmm. screened in area, not large enough to have an outdoor grill, certainly not a full outdoor kitchen, right. and maybe not even large enough to have a table to sit down to eat a full dinner. You right. might have you know, a little coffee table little and, and that table. kind of thing. So with your HOA approval, if you're in an HOA, and in many of our communities are not you know, planned communities, uh, if you have a home that you are in where you have that limited outdoor space, extending a lanai might be the place you actually want to extend because it's not necessarily roof line to your point, it's cage. Right. It can be screened and right. the cost to do that 
it gives you a ton of living space without having to actually add foundation and roof line. You're right. adding metal frame and caging. Right. And then you said maybe some nice flooring. It could be outdoor pavers right. or improving the pavers that are out there, um, that kind of thing. And maybe adding a pool? Adding a pool in Florida, you know, in a lot of areas, adding a pool can be a negative to a home. Absolutely. Uh, but in Florida, on a single family home, uh, especially going through the last couple of years that we've been through. That's a good point. Uh, a, 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 your own pool. We've seen where homes have been on the market without a pool uh, and, and not sell. And the, their, their, biggest, uh, their biggest response was, well, it didn't have a pool, you know. Mm. And people, sometimes they don't, they don't want to go through all of the, uh, the disruption of having it put in after they bought the house. So they look for the one that does have the pool. Uh, once they put the pool in, all of a sudden the house sells in a week, you know, so having a pool, uh, you know, if, if certainly if you're going to enjoy it, Absolutely. Uh, then, but if, you know, if you're not, then obviously you're going to have to price accordingly because people are looking for the pool. They are. And it may depend on how long you think you're going to stay in the home, how elaborate a pool you put in. Right. Again, are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it primarily for a resale value? because it, it can be an expense that has just really risen in the last year or two mm -hmm. and is probably going to continue to rise in pricing. And so you want to think about, am I really going to get a reasonable percentage of that back? It may not be a dollar for dollar. And you know, people have to be thinking about, right. don't think because I put $10,000 in, I'm going to get $10,000 no, back on the not. sales price. Right. But you may be the one that sells rather than the one that sits there, right. to your point. And overall, you may get a benefit in pricing. You may get back a lot for some of these remodeling tips and not as much for others so in your particular geography you really want to do that research you want to talk to some of the remodeling contractors mm -hmm. who have an idea of what that value ratio is and can help you not overdo it right uh, you don't want to overbuild or over remodel if right. you can help it unless that's your forever house and you know you're doing it for you you're and doing it for do you. what you like right. you know Absolutely. but be aware there's a consequence to being you know way over the top too that's right yep that's absolutely true. so that leaves us with one of the top five left now before we share that let me ask you if you've been finding value in these top five tips consider giving a thumbs up to this video and if you haven't already we would ask you to consider subscribing to the channel it is free absolutely free we don't hound you and and blast you with emails or other communications but if you turn on notifications what yep. we do is let you know that another video episode has posted to this channel and yeah. that's pretty helpful yep helps us and it, it helps the channel to grow doesn't it, it it does it does just give that little bell a little click there and everything will go easy everything will go well for you huh? <laughs> you'll have a good day and we will too we appreciate that um so now that we've put in that little public service announcement right. What is the number one remodeling opportunity in most homes? Guess According what it is. This what, article. what we haven't mentioned yet, the, the, the big elephant in the room. Where do people head when they come into a house and they're trying to decide if it's the house for them? It's that kitchen. kitchen. That's right. You all Absolutely. got it right. Everybody, Everybody wins. Everybody wins, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So kitchen remodeling is probably year in and year out, one of the number one remodeling priorities. Right and one of the things that is going to really help somebody feel comfortable in your home want to see themselves living there especially if that kitchen feels modern mm -hmm. has modern look decor appliances mm -hmm. that have been replaced perhaps if the right. old ones are starting to look really out of date it doesn't mean again similar to bathrooms it doesn't right. mean ripping everything out to the walls and moving everything and right. plumbing and all of this that is very very expensive to do in a kitchen right. but you can do a lot of different levels of kitchen remodeling to mm -hmm. really refresh a kitchen and do it within your budget sure. and that's really what you want to focus on you do can replace that countertop with a new sink and new fixture you can replace the light fixtures maybe pendants or even even put in some can lighting all of those things are, are much easier done than a complete tear out absolutely so I would say you know these are five tips that will be applicable to most homes and we hope that you find some value in that now in a corresponding video keep an eye out because we're also going to have a video that will share with you from the perspective of the writers at house magazine what are the top five remodeling 
uh, areas that do not tend to give you that kind of return on investment. Right. So we've talked about the top five things you want to do. Uh, next video, we'll talk about five things. You should think long and hard right. whether you want to do them or if you're doing them only for yourself. So don't miss that video. That one will be coming up on the channel as well. But I have one more tip. You do? I do. I have another tip that I, that I really want to yeah. share with you okay. on, I any, can't wait. on any of these. Whatever, whatever project that you plan to do, please make sure that you have the proper permits, you're hiring the yes. proper licensed contractors. The worst thing you can do is to try to go and sell your house and there is an unpermitted uh, uh, enhancement or Ooh. an addition to your Our home. Yeah. Uh, you're going to lose the buyer most likely. You're going to, it's just going to take everything so much longer. Uh, it's going to end up costing you more in the long run. Get it done the right way. Get the right permits. Get the right licensed contractors. Uh, a lot of times handymen can do a great job, but when you start talking about it, uh, plumbing and wiring, you really need to think of who you're going to hire. Right, and if those contractors are used to going to the county where you live, and pulling permits, they know the process, they know the timelines, right. they will often even make the application detail for you to submit to your homeowners association right. so you can get the homeowner association approval you need. And they're putting that in one you know, kind of package because right. that is part of the expertise that they have. Right. So you're right, absolutely. And you want people who are bonded and insured because depending on the extent to which they're doing some dramatic things in your house, you don't want anybody falling or getting hurt or right. something happening. And so you you want to make sure you hire contractors that make this a stress-free process as much as possible right. for you as the homeowner. So Absolutely. I think your tip may have, have been really the most important one out of the whole day. Well. That's great. So thank you for sharing that one with everybody. We hope you enjoyed the video. Look out for our top five tips to beware of if you're thinking about remodeling your home in the new year. And when you're ready to sell your home or to purchase a home, we hope that you will give us a call, contact us. Our contact information is down below in the description to this video. We're here and looking forward to a great year ahead. And uh, we can't wait to see what you do with your remodel. Call us, uh, we'll come help you check it out. And until the next video, have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye now.